Hi everybody, it's Dwayne from Git Kraken. I'm here today with five advanced Git Lens tips. So no matter if you've been using Git Lens for a while now, or you're brand new to Git Lens, these tips should help you make the most out of the most popular Git extension for VS Code. Git Lens exposes annotations on every line of code. By default, you have to hover over just the annotation to get more information. However, you can modify this so you can hover over any part of the line to expose that same information. Here in VS Code, I'll go ahead and open the command palette and look for, well, right there, Git Lens settings. If I scroll down a few blocks, uh, we'll get to the hovers section. Hovers add detailed blame information accessible, well, via hovers. That's what you're looking at here. This is the preview of the feature. You can turn this entire feature on or off with a click of a checkbox. You can also control all the elements of how this works. The one I came in here to show you though is show hovers for current line by default annotation only, and here line and annotation. What that looks like, if I open a file here, at the end of every line, we will see that blame annotation. And if I hover over the blame annotation, it'll show me more information, just as expected. However, since I have modified this behavior, I can hover over any part of that line, and it will also show me that same hover. Git Lens allows you to modify the date and time settings. So now it's very easy to localize the time for your favorite format or just customize it to be anything you want it to be. Here in VS Code, I'll go ahead and open the command palette and I'll once again, will open my settings. Over here on the right, there is a jump to menu. It saved me a little time scrolling. Just go to date and time right there. So here we can see a number of options. We can make this relative time or we can make it absolute time just with a click of a button. We can have it default to the VS Code locale or manually set where we want it to be. And here are the date format. Go ahead and update it to my favorite setting, which is ISO 8601, which is year in front, followed by month, followed by day. And that is how the date will display for me moving forward. I can also modify the short date format, the time format. I'll leave that alone for now. Uh, but I can also modify any of these by opening up the settings from here and looking for Git Lens defaults. Git Lens allows you to quickly add key bindings for any command that you can open from the command palette. This is extremely helpful if you find yourself going to the command palette over and over again for the same command. Why not just set a hotkey for it? Here in VS Code, I can open up the command palette, command shift P, type git lens, and it will show me all of the commands available to me. Now, if it's something I use quite often, such as, well, I do open settings quite often, uh, I can click the gear icon. This is true of all the commands, and it will open the command setting. Clicking on key binding here, it will show me I can set a key binding for this. So if I wanted to say uh, control option command S, to open settings, go to command show option S, and Git Lens settings opens just like that. If you've picked something that already has a binding, uh, so for this instance, let's just say command S, it will tell you, hey, there's already a key binding there. You might want to pick something else. Git Lens leverages Code Lens, which is another tool that exposes information inside of VS Code. With Git Lens, you can customize how those Code Lens operations behave. Let's take a look. Back in VS Code, if we open up the command palette, find our open settings, and scroll down to the second block exposed, it is the code lens block. Uh, this allows you full control over code lens. You can turn the entire feature on or off, and you see here in the preview window what that means. By default, it's set for file scope and container scope. That's why you're seeing it twice here. Uh, you can also turn it on for block scope. Clicking on it, by default, shows file details of the commit. You have a lot of options on what this will do upon click. Toggling the file blame, showing the current branch history. We invite you to explore this and really make it your own. You have complete control over how Git Lens exposes annotations. And there's an entire set of tokens you can use to completely personalize how that information is presented. Opening up our settings, Command Shift P for the command palette, and then Oh, the first one I want is Git Lens Open Settings. The thing I actually want is Current Line Blame. Again, we can turn the entire feature on or off if we want, and that's what we're talking about here with the Line Blame. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was the annotation format. This is how it's set up currently. However, if I click into the annotation format box, it will expose a number of available tokens. And I can modify this to be any format that I choose it to be. 
Uh, or I can just move things around. So if I want the author at the end, I can simply move it to the end. If I want my message to only show me the first, let's say 10 characters of the message instead of 50, there we go. Uh, you have complete control over this. This is true of both the current line blame, or if we scroll down a little bit to the status bar blame, this is also customizable. You can make them match, you can make them behave slightly differently. It's completely up to you. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you've been using Gitlens for a while, let us know if these surprised you or what your favorite advanced tips are. If you're new to Gitlens, I highly encourage you to look around in settings and really customize the experience to match your particular workflow.